out thermal conductivity of metal rod so before commencing this experiment it should require to have some basic idea of thermal conductivity so let me go through the thermal conductivity first and then we will observe how to find thermal conductivity of metal rod by experimentation so basically you can say the thermal conductivity is the ability of material to transfer heat from one location to the another location again one time the thermal conductivity of material is the ability of material to conduct or you can say to transfer heat from one location to the another location and the thermal conductivity is denoted by letter k and it is a unit of what per meter celsius or you can say what per meter kelvin again it is a thermophysical property which ultimately dictates the ability of heat transfer rate so ultimately the material which is having the higher thermal conductivity which means the given material is able to transfer heat very quickly okay again one time the thermal conductivity is ultimately dictates the ability to conduct heat which means the material which is having the higher thermal conductivity will convey the heat very quickly okay and uh, uh, one question must arise in all of our mind that uh, why we need to find thermal conductivity of material because as a thermal engineer we are going to design the different equipments like uh, processed heat exchanger then after refrigerator and air conditioning so at that time for designing of the piping or you can say tubing network it's quite essential for us to choose a perfect material okay and uh, thermal conductivity is one of the parameter which is might helpful in deciding the different type of material that we want to use for the particular application so that's why it's quite essential to identify thermal conductivity of any material so in this practical we are going to observe that how to find the thermal conductivity of unknown metallic rod okay so let's proceed so here as i told you our aim is to find the thermal conductivity of metal rod so in the given diagram you can observe the schematic layout of experimental test rig as well as the actual experiment test rig so here you can see just observe my cursor moment here here on the actual system diagram here we have this blue color uh, uh, one piping kind of network thing is here okay and if you want to understand more thoroughly then you need to focus on the schematic here on the right hand side so in the setup we have first one is on off switch so here observe we have on off switch on off switch you can correlate actual setup as well as the schematic so that you will get clear idea so we have here on off switch then after on the left hand side here we have a volt meter okay volt meter then just adjacent to the voltmeter here we have a meter okay which ultimately measure the flow rate of current or you can say simple current then after adjacent to the a meter here we have a temperature indicator which measures the temperature okay now question is that why here we have a voltmeter in a meter so to understand this just observe the experiment setup here you can see here we have this black color knob okay this black color knob is known as a dimmer main function of dimmer is to control voltage okay and hence the current because during the experiment we require to heat the metallic rod so for the heating we are using the heater and heater we are supplying voltage so as per our conveniency here using the dimmer we are able to we are able to set the different voltage and hence the different heating rate 
okay so now i think it is clear to all of you guys that the main function of dimmer is to control the voltage that we are going to supply to the heater in order to change the heat flow rate through the metallic probe but for the experimentation purpose we are uh, generally you provide the voltage in between 70 volt to the 80 volt okay so it is all about the, the different controls of experimental test rig then after here you can see the blue color cylinder okay so inside the blue color cylinder here we have metallic row just observe the schematic here observe the cursor movement here we have a metallic row which is surrounded by one cylinder which is surrounded by one cylinder so the main function of the surrounded cylinder is to avoid the unwanted heat transfer i mean to say the heat transfer from metallic rope to the outside air okay so that uh, we can neglect the different losses as well for the experimentation purpose and here we have a heater which is just fixed toward the one end of the metallic rope so that we can provide the heat to the metallic rod and over the road here you can see over the road surface here we have a four different temperature sensors t1 t2 t3 and t4 okay t1 t2 t3 and t4 and if you observe the actual as well as the schematic you you may found here we have number of forces we have two number of forces just observe my cursor moment here we have a two number of horses through which there is the flow of water so the main function of water is to provide cooling effect to the metallic road as we hit the metallic road what is going to be happen the metallic road temperature is going to be increased so to protect it from the overheating it's required to reduce the temperature of metallic road and so for that here we are supplying water and here water enters at the temperature T5 and leaves at the temperature T6. Okay, so it is all about the construction of a experimental setup or you can say experimental test trick. Now, I would like to explain the procedure of finding the thermal conductivity using this setup. So, before going to understand the procedure, okay, just let me recapitulate the first law of thermodynamic so the first law of thermodynamic is like that the energy is not created nor destroyed but just transferred from one form to the another form so here what is going to be happen whatever the amount of heat that is we are supplying from the heater to the road okay the same heat is carried by this water okay again one time the whatever amount of heat that we are supplying using this heater okay is going to transfer to this metallic road okay and now the same heat is absorbed by this water which is flowing over the metallic road okay so with this little bit concept in our mind let me just give you few more detail regarding this experiment okay so in this experiment here if you observe the transfer of heat through the metallic rope then you can say here we have a conduction mode which is responsible for transferring the heat from the metallic rope so for the conduction we have law for your law which is like k a dt by dx where k equal to conductivity a equal to area of road and dt by dx is temperature gradient okay so the whatever the amount of heat which is transferred from heater to the metallic road by the conduction okay the same amount of heat is absorbed by the water so the amount of heat which is absorbed by the water is given by equation mcp delta t which we have learned in thermodynamics so you can say k a dt by dx is equal to be mcp delta t so with this little bit uh, inside of equation okay now we will proceed for the experimentation so here let me just start the switch of experimental setup the switch toward the on position once we start our experimental setup okay then we need to set the certain voltage and corresponding amperes are visible on screen we need to wait for the steady state until and unless the steady state has been achieved we are not able to 
you know take the readings so we need to wait for the steady state uh, for the steady state we require half an hour okay so after the steady state here we have a set of reading with us that are T1 equal to 47, T2 equal to 46, T3 equal to 43, T4 equal to 40, T5 equal to 37 degree and T6 equal to 38. Okay, all the readings, okay, you can collect from the temperature indicator just by switching the positions of the, you know, knob. Okay, in temperature indicator, we have up and down switch. Using up and down switch, you are able to read different temperature. So, as per the current reading, I have a set of data, okay, which ultimately detects the different temperature from T1 to T6. So, I have an old temperature, okay, as well as voltage, as well as current data. Voltage is 71 after the steady state and uh, the current is uh, about 33. Now, we have complete database with us. Now, just we need to solve for the thermal conductivity. So, as I told you that uh, the heat transfer, okay, the heat transfer by the metallic rod because of the conduction is equivalent to the heat gained by the water, okay. So, based on the, this relationship, let me move ahead. So, before going toward the further discussion, you need to make one observation table so here you can see we have observation table in which i have wrote the different temperature from t1 to t6 so t1 to t4 uh, temperatures are the temperature of the test bar okay while the t5 and t6 are the temperature of water so on the screen you can read the exact value of all the temperature t1 is 47 t2 is equal to 46 t3 equal to 43 and t4 equal to 40 while t5 and t6 are 37 and 38 celsius respectively and along with that we have voltage as well as current data voltage is 71 voltage while the current is 0.33 now as i told you that uh, in order to pull the metal rod we require to supply water okay so here i have supplied 2 to 5 multiplied by 10 to 3 minus sorry 2 to 5 multiplied by 10 to minus 3 liter per second of water to the system so that the temperature of metallic rod is within in limit okay so the mass flow rate of water is 2 to 5 multiplied by 10 to 3 that you need to supply and i have supplied 2 to 5 multiplied by 10 to minus 3 liter per second you can supply any mass flow rate okay then after the diameter of bar metal bar is 0 0.025 meter and length of bar is 103 mm both of this data diameter and length of the bar is provided by the manufacturer of the setup okay so you don't need to bother about this so now we have complete database with us now just by using the basic equation just let me solve the unknown that is the conductivity of metal rod so as i told you from the first law of thermodynamic energy released by the metal rod because of the conduction is equivalent to heat gain by the water okay so i can write uh, for the metal rod ka dt by dx because the transfer of heat inside the metallic rod is because of the conduction that's why i have wrote this equation that is basic fourier law ka dt by dx on the other side heat gain by the water is equal to you can say mcp delta t okay so just now substitute the different value okay uh, area which is pi by 4 multiplied by t square right dt by dx what do you mean by dt by dx dt by dx indicates the temperature gradient which means if you observe the diagram okay just let me go through the diagram so here we have a diagram in which you can see 
the length of bar metallic rod particularly is 103 mm so initial temperature of the metal rod okay nearer to the heater is 47 which is t1 t1 is 47 while the temperature of metallic rod which is far away from the heater is 40 degree that is t4 that is t4 here you can see t1 equal to 47 and t4 equal to 40 so here, here we have temperature difference is 47 minus 40 which is 7 degree so we have value of dt with us that is 7 divided by dx dx stand for the length of bar which is 103 mm so you can say 0 0.103 uh, mm so based on this we are able to obtain the gradient particularly temperature gradient that is dt by dx so after the calculation here particularly i have uh, you know the uh, gradient is with me while well, mcp delta d i have set the mass flow rate which is equal to 225 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 3 liter per second okay you need to convert liter per second to kg per second and for the water liter per second is equal to kg per second because of the density that is 1000 so here we have mass flow rate 225 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 3 the specific heat of water is 4168 that is standard value and the so temperature difference of water which is higher temperature minus lower so t6 minus t5 so t6 equal to 38 t5 equal to 37 so the substitute you will get thermal conductivity equal to 329.38 volt per meter celsius so just by following the procedure okay we are able to obtain we are able to obtain thermal conductivity of any unknown material so it is all about the practical that is related with the exploration of uh, thermal conductivity of unknown material so after performing this practical we can conclude that okay the temperature is going to reduce along the length of bar why because we know that for the conduction okay the free moment of electron is responsible for the heat transfer okay so that as we proceed along the length or along the gradient but always the temperature is going to be reduced second point is that the thermal conductivity particularly in metal is inversely proportional to the temperature because as we increase the temperature thermal conductivity is going to be reduced why because in the given experiment we have metal rod okay and the multi we have metal rod particularly made up of copper and for the copper the thermal conductivity range is around 370 at normal temperature that is 25 okay but here in our experiment we have set the temperature of 47 degree okay that is t1 so as as we increase the temperature what was thermal conductivity of metal is going to be decrease this is our main conclusion okay and then third one is that you can say uh, by and the third one is that the value of thermal conductivity of copper bar particular is 329 experimental that we have found which is slightly different from the standard value and the standard value is 386 volt per meter celsius and we have this difference because we have heated copper bar to 47 degree that is the first thing that i have explained you in point number two but the second thing is that we have also neglected different losses which is there because of the radiation okay so it is all about the practical of exploring the thermal conductivity of unknown material thank you